Hi, everyone. This is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein. I would like to welcome you to today's lecture. Now, today I would like to talk about one of the more popular openings against d4, the Dutch defense, in particular, how to play against it. And I'm going to show you a very interesting way to handle the Dutch after d4, f5, c4, knight f6, knight c3, g6. So there are different setups. g6 is the Leningrad variation where black typically fianceros the bishop, follows by castle. But there is also another way to play the Dutch e6, and this is not going to be covered today. Instead, I want to focus on the move g6, and here I would like to show you a move which is a little bit, how to say it, provocative. It's the move h4. Very, very aggressive way to try to punish black's opening. As a matter of fact, h4 has been played by a very strong chess player, Hikaru Nakamura, who is himself plays the Dutch as black. So we can really trust him in this line. And I will show you a very beautiful miniature by Nakamura. But first, let's talk a little bit about this move h4. And is this really a sound way to play against the Dutch? What's White's idea? So after bishop g7, which is the typical move, white plays h5. Yes, the idea here is first you sacrifice the pawn, and if knight takes h5, now you're setting yourself up for an exchange sacrifice. So white falls with very strong e4, x clam, and after pawn takes, Rook takes h5, pawn takes, queen takes h5, and white gets a very strong attack, and this is what we're going to take a look at from Nakamura's game. But before we go in details in this line, let's go back and try to understand why this h4, h5 is so lethal against the Dutch setup with the Fianchero variation. Number one, knight on f6 and the pawn on f5 are controlling the key square e4. So the way white fights in the opening is ideally we want to play e4 ourselves. So this move h4 is aimed to try to distract black so after h5, really, you cannot avoid not to take this pawn, because if black will take castles, then he gets under very, very dangerous attack. White opens the h file, and now he can play either immediate bishop h6, followed by queen d2 and castle long with powerful attack, or he can even play knight f3, and there is really no rush with an h file open White has a superior position. And really the problem that black has is it's not so easy to defend against the move h5. If black plays h5 himself, let's go back a move, this really weakens the g5 square. And this is a positional suicide, you might even say, because now white can do whatever he wants. He can play knight h3, followed by bishop g5, the knight can go to f4, or even try to open up the center with f3 and e4 and get to the weak g6 pawn. Now h6 is one possible way to try to counter h5, so that you meet it with g5. But yet this is looking kind of ugly as well, because just look at this pawn on g6. Whenever white is going to open up the b1, h7 diagonal, black's king is really going to get in trouble. So this is, again, not a recommended way to try to prevent h5. So that makes 
white plan, very sound. And besides bishop g7, really there is no other way to try to stop h5. Black has had tried to play d6 in the past. And again, white plays h5 no matter what. Now knight takes, rook takes, pawn takes. And here again, we want to open up the center. And the right move is e4, x clan. Of course, if pawn takes e4, we take on h5, we check. And now we can simply even develop with bishop e3, followed by castle long and a free tuck. So you kind of get the general idea of these positions. You open up the king side, sacrifice the exchange, and get a very easy and free tuck. And this is exactly why black doesn't like to play against this move h4. Because whenever your opponent plays the Dutch, that means that typically they are looking for very active peace play, but now we are actually reversing the roles. Black has to defend, which is not an easy task. So let's keep going and take a look what actually happens after the normal bishop g7. So h5, knight takes h5, and now e4. By the way, you might want to ask yourself a question, what about immediate rook takes h5, followed by e4? And I think it's totally fine. The only thing you have to worry about is that now black can castle, and it's not going to be as easy to play your attack out. So that's why typically e4 is actually a stronger move. All right, so now black really has two options. Pick up the pawn and allow white to take on h5. The second option is to try to say, all right, I want a free pawn. Now I'm going to go back to f6 and try to defend the position. And of course, in this position, white has sufficient compensation. You can even play e5. And just look at the position. It's not so easy to find the move for the knight. If knight e4, then we can simply take, followed by either queen c2 or even bishop h6. With excellent counterplay. Or there is a completely different way to play it. Take on f5, followed by bishop h6. And now, again, black is facing some difficulties. You can't really castle short. You're going to get under a very dangerous attack. Whereas white just has a very comfortable play for the pawn. Queen d2, castle long, so forth. Very simple play. So let's go back. And after e4, f takes e, rook takes, pawn takes, queen takes h5, check. King f8. All of this is pretty forced. And now... We're following the game, Nakamura, against a low-rated player. But nevertheless, I think this is still a very instructive game. All right, so now bishop h6. We want to exchange the last defender, the bishop on g7. So here, black took on, on h6. And played king to g8. So the king is wide open, and if you're an attacking player, this is a highly recommended way to play against the Dutch. So now the question is, how do you continue your attack? Well, number one is you want to learn the king to war square than g8 after queen g5 check, king f7, and now knight takes e4. So now you have two options. You can play queen f5 check followed by knight g5 or queen h5 check followed by knight g5. So you have a lot of different options. You can also play bishop e2 with idea bishop h5 check. A lot of different attacking options. And it's not so easy to defend. Black really has no pieces except the lone king 
plan out of the opening. So let's see what happened in this game. So queen g8, black is trying to change pair of queens. And at the same time, he, he believes that king is safer on e8, perhaps even in the center, e8 and d8. So what does white do next? Very easy. We just pick up the second pawn. Queen f4, followed by queen takes c7. So black got a breather, and he develops the knight. And again, Nakamura is playing very effective chess, rapid development, and simply castle long. So at this point, I think there is no doubt that white has superior possession, he has the initiative, and the material advantage that black has, has basically evaporated. Because the exchange, in return for the exchange, white has very powerful attack, white has the pawn, and a better piece placement. So there is no doubt that white is now has the upper hand. So this miniature game actually finished just a few more moves and black completely got devastated here after the move. So let's see what happened next. So after the move queen g6, well, I mean, you got to give black credit that they're still trying to create some threats, attacking that on e4. You know, potentially they're going to play d6, bishop f5, rook c8, and so forth. Unfortunately, with the next move, I think Nakamura seals the deal. Rook to e1. It turns out that the rook is participating in the attack by x-raying the king on e8. It turns out that knight takes d4 is simply lost, or losing after queen e5, hitting the rook and the knight. Or if you want to be fancy, you can even finish the game off in style. Knight d6 check, notice the pin. So you have king f8, then we'll just simply win by force. Queen takes e7 check. Well, if king e8, then we we can always pick up queen d8 check and just basically black has to play king g7 and now rook e7 check and this is real games over basically. But what what to do after king h6? Well, then we just simply finish the game with knight f7 check, and rook e5, and it's just simply main. So that tells you that already black is on the verge of getting made. So knight takes d4 is not possible. d6 loses simply to knight takes d6. We pick up the second pawn with a powerful attack. So black, I think, is completely busted. But... He doesn't resign yet, he plays king f7. Again, there is no rush to try to finish the game immediately, so Nakamura plays d5, asking the knight where he's gonna go. Knight b4. By the way, knight d4 loses to queen e5, and the position is again completely lost. If queen g7, White can try to, again, try show some fireworks. With the move knight to d6 check. And it turns out that black loses quickly. Pawn takes knight. Queen e7 check. And king g8, we simply pick up the queen. Rook e7 check. And if king f6, then we can now play rook e8 check. And picking up the rook, this game is over. So, again, 
Knight d4 is easily lost after queen e5, queen g7, knight d6, and so forth. Now, what about knight to b4? And this is what actually happened in the game. Again, the pawn on a2 is hanging, but don't forget that besides the lone knight on b4 and the queen on g6, really black has no threats. So queen on g6 cannot, cannot really connect with the knight, so we don't really care about the pawn on a2. Instead, we now develop with the move knight f3, and I think black is in real trouble. Knight e5 is a threat. Knight e to g5 is a threat. Two knights and a rook participated in the attack. What does black have? Other moves. Knight is hanging. Knight has to go to b4. And position is completely. So the game really finished quite. So now white wins by force with a very beautiful combination. There's actually probably more than one way to win this, but the finish by Nakamura is picturesque. So knight e2 g5 check, king g8, queen d8 check, king g7. Now rook takes e7, queen takes e7 followed by knight f7 check, wins as well. But rook takes e7, there is some actual fireworks, king to h6, and now, by the way, what happens after king to f6? We can give a double check, which is actually check me, rook to f7. So let's go back and say king h6, this would happen in the game. And at this moment, I think everyone can find the winning combination. So notice that picking up the rook is no good because now you actually get checkmated. So this is one threat in the whole game from black. But after king h6, all of white's moves are forced. And let's see if you can find the next combination which wins on the spot. So the right move is knight to f7 check, x clamp. In the game, black played king h5 and lost quickly, but what happened after queen takes f7? Notice that if we pick up the queen, then we lose our queen. So this is not something you want to do. Instead, white has the intermezzo move, rook to e6 check. Notice that now if queen or bishop takes rook, then queen g5 is made. So that means that there is really no other move than king g7. And the game is lost. Queen g5, and rook f6. Game over. So this is a very beautiful finish that could have happened in the game. Instead, black actually lost quickly. Mate in two after rook e5. And now, no matter what, bishop f5 or pawn takes rook, black is losing with queen h4 mate. So this 24-move miniature by Nakamura really shows how dangerous the move h4 is in the popular line of the Dutch, the Leningrad variation with g6 and bishop g7. So I hope you learned quite a lot, and we'll use this line in your games, probably win a few, and good luck in your chess. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.